Cheryl, so you challenged me to find you a baby animal and I was like, oh my God, I'm literally in the middle of moving. Hello, this is the view from my new apartment. Horrible, I know. So you were like, find me a baby animal. But the closest thing I've seen to a baby animal was maybe like two months ago when all the birds in the park were looking for nesting material and were hopping around with little bits of, you know, straw and other stuff in their mouth. And that's the closest that I've come to. And so when you were like, find me a baby animal and I'm in the middle of the city and I'm moving, like I was like, what the hell? But then literally Ecuador heard my plea. I don't know if it's being on the equator. I don't know exactly, but there is some energy here because Ecuador heard my plea and literally a baby bird fell onto my patio in my new apartment. <laughs> However, before we get into that, I would like to rate your challenge. Turf Wars, a battle of wits, knowledge, and creativity. Which naturalist will prove they're the best? Choose your fighter and watch the action unfold on Turf Wars! So Cheryl, I painstakingly watched your video and I counted 15 ant facts. So you get 15 ant points? The rules are made up and the points don't matter. Also, I liked your puns and I was so sad that you passed up the opportunity to say that you were an entomologist. <laughs> However, technically, I guess you could be picky and say that people who study ants aren't entomologists. They are, in fact, myrmeocologists because it comes from the Greek word of ant. Anyway, other story. So before I show you some cute baby animals, I wanted to highlight some excellent work by members of our community. You love bugs are doing an excellent job. Remember that if you want to play along in any of these challenges, you can tag any of us in this social media or post in our learning community, the Sci Hive. Link in the reference section. Teal found these red harvester ants in California and provided us with six ant facts. So she gets six ant points. Woohoo! And on topic with the current challenge, David in 2014 found these sand hill crane babies. And Giomar recently found these American woodcock babies. So cute! So I'm moving um, and I think my dog caught a baby bird. So I wonder if this counts. I think he's a baby because he still has like that fluff around his feathers and uh, like the coloration is a little bit different. He's okay. So I'm gonna go a little asustado, but okay. So. I think I'm gonna like let him outside, but uh, here's a baby, well, fledgling bird, I think. Like his tail is relatively short, which is why I think he's a baby and he has a fluff and I don't know, his coloration hasn't really come in yet, so, yep. After consulting with Twitter, this is a fledgling of an eared dove, which are really common in Quito, and I'll put in some footage of like the adult season to see how different they are. Anyway, he's fine. I left him on this tree and came back a little bit later and he was gone. I also found this family of sow bugs, or in Spanish, as they're called tanchitos. And before you tell me that they're arthropods, you said just not bugs, bugs. And I'm gonna challenge you to make them not insect babies because I know that's just too tempting for you. Find me something that's not an insect. It can be a different kind of invertebrate if you happen to find a different invertebrate family or invertebrate babies, but no bugs this time. Let's make it something different. Uh Sow bugs, despite having the word bug in the name, are not bugs video up here about what bugs mean to entomologists and they're not even insects they are in the order isopoda and isopods are crustaceans which means that they're closely related to crabs and lobsters and shrimp and like coca pods and stuff like that these little crustaceans do have gills you can find the gills on the underside of their body which is why you usually find them in kind of damp dark moist environments because that's how they breathe. They're doing you a huge service in your backyard if you find them because they can clean heavy metals out of the soil and they are so important and really important decomposers and important for soil health and just like really good to have around. So if you find them, you should keep them around. Anyway, here you can see a whole little family of them. They're so cute. The little ones are the babies and then the bigger ones are their subsequently older siblings. They are what we call gregarious. They're not truly social like ants, for example, but they will hang out in these family groups and sometimes they're cannibalistic. So like that's a thing that happens. <laughs> 
flip over any rock, log, flower pot, etc. in a backyard near you and you will most likely find these little guys. Well Cheryl, I hope you liked looking at these cute little arthropods that are definitely not insects. Alright Cheryl, I have a challenge for you, but first some backstory. As you can tell, I live in the middle of this very beautiful city called Quito, but you can tell that there's a lot of green spaces here. Behind me is the mountain Pachincha. I've taken you to that on different Turf Wars videos. I believe that's Parque Metropolitano, but I just moved here. Maps are hard and directions are hard, so I think that's Parque Metropolitano, but I don't remember. Um, and as you can just tell, there's like trees and green stuff just kind of everywhere. And that's one of the things that I love most about Quito is that even though I'm in the middle of this giant city, I can get to green spaces and find native plants and fauna. I even helped co-author a paper that came out last year, here it is right here, about an endemic subspecies of butterfly. That means that that butterfly you can only find in Quito and literally, literally nowhere else in the whole world. And these green spaces are so important for this butterfly. We didn't know what its larva looked like. It had never been documented before. We didn't know what predators it had. And literally, it's flying around Parque Carolina and is literally laying its eggs on Chetis, which is like a pretty major road, and is laying its eggs like literally in the trees in the median. Actually, technically, it's on the mistletoe that's growing on the trees in the median, but yeah. And so when that paper came out, I took some of the pictures and I helped edit some of the English and I sent many a leaf down to Cuenca so the professor could rear the caterpillars and we could get the drawings of them. However, we were talking about how important these green spaces are in Quito to protect this local and, and sometimes endemic fauna. So for example, Pachincha back there has an endemic beetle that lives on it. It's a carabid beetle. You can find it on that, on that mountain and nowhere else in the whole world. I showed you some of the local plants and native plants that you can find in Rumipamba. I have no idea about lichens. I don't know if the ones that I showed you in Parque Carolina are particularly special, but uh, they're here and I showed them to you in those green spaces. Okay, Cheryl, this is your challenge. I want you to go into your city, tell us what city it is first, and then tell us how those green spaces are important, not just for people, but also for native plants and animals that you're going to be finding. I'm so excited to see what you're gonna find. I'm hoping that you're gonna find some bugs because it's like, you know, it's almost summer where you live. I forget what, how seasons work because I live like in internal spring all the time. I'm just <laughs> not complaining. But tell us how these green spaces are important for conservation, but also how they're helpful for people because I think that's so important when we talk about conservation like people are part of the story as well all right cheryl i will see you next time bye